Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, I'll be showing you how to fix this Windows Update Error 0x800 70643. Now, a lot of you have probably got this error as Microsoft have kind of messed up when it comes to releasing this update. So at the moment, they haven't released another update to actually fix this error. However, there is currently a workaround and that's by changing a size to your partition within Command Prompt. Now, before we go ahead and get started on that, I just want to share with you a program that I created called Easy System Utility. Now, this program allows you to clean system files, as you can see there, and also software, which I will be updating soon, adding a lot more, but the program is new. So also you've got folders and files where you can unlock folders, files, um, you can change image file sizes and add watermarks to um, images and stuff like that and as you can see on the left hand side there's many more options so if you want to check that out then and you want to obviously help support the program check it out by using the link in the description below which will take you to my website now the first thing that we need to do to fix this windows update is to open up the start menu and type in cmd and you want to run command prompt as an administrator now this is the part of the video when i'm going to tell you to make sure that you do back up any important files and stuff like that on your computer just in case anything was to go wrong but as long as you follow the steps in this video then everything should be fine anyway so the first thing that you need to do is go ahead and type out the following command also, I will pop a link in the description below to a guide that I will do on my website, which will have a list of all the commands if you don't want to type them out. So check out the link in the description below. So the first command that we need to type out is R-E-A-G-E-N-T-C forward slash info. Make sure you put that space in and then press enter. So as you can see, that's brought up a bit of information about our Windows recovery environment. Now, the thing that we want to look at here is Windows RE status. You need to ensure that says enabled and you've got an RE location. If you don't, then this video isn't going to work. But if you do have that path and it says enabled, then happy days. We're good to carry on. So the next command we're going to want to use is REAGENTC forward slash disable. As we want to disable the Windows RE, next you need to type in disk part and press enter and this will access the disk part tool which is going to allow us to make some changes to the partition. You can now go ahead and type in list disk. So here you can now see a list of all the disk drives or hard drives that are on your computer. So as you can see I've got disk 0 and it goes all the way up to disk 3. Now we need to ensure that we do go ahead and select the correct disk in a second. So you now need to type in SEL disk and you can then open up disk manager and we can then just check we are going to select the correct disk. So you can now see on my screen I've got disk management open. So you can open this up by opening up the start menu and search for disk management and then just opening it. So we now need to find out which disk is our main Windows drive, so the hard drive that has Windows installed onto. So you can see there, disk 1 is my C drive, which means it's my Windows drive. And you can actually see there, it says healthy, and then boot, page file, crash dump, primary partition, and then you can see also next to it, it's got healthy recovery partition, which is what we're currently working on changing. So I need to make sure that I select disk 1. So let's now go back to CMD. So you now need to type in the number for the drive that Windows is installed on. So I need to type the number one and then press enter. Now type the command list part and then press enter and you will now see the partitions that are on the drive. So as you can see, I've got three partitions, which is correct. You now need to select the partition that Windows is installed on. So if you go back to disk management, you can see there that I've got 222 gig. So I now need to find the partition that has 222 gig, as that's the partition that Windows is installed onto. So you can see there that partition 2 is 222 gig. So I now need to type in the command SEL and then part, and then I'm going to put the number 2 and press enter. So partition 2 is now the selected partition. The next command you need to type shrink desired equals 250 and then minimum equals 250 as well. You might need to change these values depending on your operating system, but for now, just try using these values. 
So once you've typed that out, go ahead again and press enter. This can actually take a little while to do, depending on how fast your computer is. Now once that's finished, the next thing that we need to type is SEL and then part, and you now need to select the partition that your recovery is on. So you can see there I've got 546 meg for my recovery partition. And you can see there 546 meg. So I now need to type in the number three and then press enter. So you now see I've selected partition three. So the next command is the scary command as it's the one that's going to delete the partition, the recovery partition. So in the previous command there, select so SEL part and then you can see I've got number three. Just make sure that is definitely the correct number for the recovery partition. And once you're happy with that, go ahead and type delete partition override and press enter. Now the next command we need to do is type in one that we've already used, which is list disk. Now you're going to see a list again of all your disk drives. So you need to find the disk that's got obviously Windows installed onto. And then you need to see if you've got a star underneath GPT. Now if you do, then you're going to want to use the following command. Now I'm going to actually use the command even though it won't work on this computer because it's not got a GPT drive. I'm just going to show you so you can see what it's like in the video. And also if you were to accidentally use the wrong code, so command GPT, it, you can see that it's not going to actually cause any problems or it didn't anyway for myself. So that's the first command for GPT and as you can see it went into error. Now the next command will be GPT and then space attributes and then space and then equals 0x and then 8 and then there's loads of zeros and a 1. I will bring it up on the screen as I'm talking at the moment so you can see the command. But like I said there's a link in the description below to our website and it will have all the commands on there. So hopefully you have now created a partition if you're on a GPT drive. Next I'm going to show you how to do this on an MBR drive. So GPT drivers do not need to do this next bit. So we now need to type in create space partition space primary space ID equals 27 and then press enter. So that's it now for the MBR users as well. So GPT and MBR, you need to do the next steps now. So you can actually format the new partition that you created if you want to, but I don't actually see the point in doing this as it's a new partition. So it's basically formatted anyway. Now the next command is simple. All you need to do is type exit and press enter. If you're wondering why there's loads of text above my screen on command prompt at the moment, that's because I went ahead a step and went to enable the recovery partition, which you're not supposed to do until you exit out of the disk part. So type exit and then press enter. You now need to type in the following command. So again, R-E-A-G-E-N-T-C space forward slash enable and then press enter. That's it, we are now done with command prompt. You can go ahead and close it down and go back to Windows Update. So if you now go ahead and click on the retry button, it should now begin to reinstall that update and it should work. So you can see mine is now saying installing and it's currently on 0%. So I'm just gonna give this a few seconds and then make sure it definitely installs. And then once it has finished installing, we can then go ahead and check the update history just to ensure that the update has definitely installed. So there we go, you can see Windows is up to date. If I click view update history, you can see that the update is there. So that's it for this video. I hope this video helped you out and you enjoyed it. If you did like this video, click the like button below. And if you want to see more computer sluggish videos, then click the subscribe button. If you do subscribe, then I will see you in the next video.